last friday number hmm? 16 are you sure gone so far i thought it had gone only up to 12 no yeah 16 the maximum life span goes down up to how much 10 quite natural hmm? this is the nature even the plant life you know i remember certain trees fruits trees that we have seen in our compound when we were small children when we visit home a still those trees exist see more than 60 years old a still bear fruits mango jack fruits and certain other fruits but today when you plant a mango tree how many years that tree can last sometimes you plant this on a flower pot and very soon you can see the fruits also won't last even 3 to 4 years that is the end of that tree so our human life human body also exactly like this so it depend on how we handle how we make use of this body for what purpose our daily routine our food and our thought how far we have polluted the purity of our mind and what sort of burdens responsibilities and worries and disturbances we paid in mind according to modern way of life thinking that we are enjoying actually we are not enjoying we have more worries more disturbances more fear which our forefathers never experienced because they had enough time to relax enough time to sleep take food and joke and laugh but today you have no time for that why you are crazy for earning money 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 nothing but money but you do not know why you need so much money to enjoy but can how far can you enjoy people are going on collecting collecting accumulating by thinking that they can enjoy meanwhile they kick the bucket no time to enjoy that they are so crazy for earning and this is the nature of our life today everywhere tension challenge competition grudge and jealousy and these are the things that completely pollute the purity of our mind every thought that which appear in our mind affects our physical body we never notice we never think as first attack or disturb or irritate the tender parts particles 
เพราะความอะไร such as brain cells blood cells and then glands heart blood circulation and then the stomach liver kidneys eyes so one after the other in the end when you grow old all the organs were affected they are not sicknesses by polluting by poisoning our mind our mental energy we ruin our physical body and then more and more new sicknesses now leukemia blood cancer and cancer number one killer in malaysia and singapore but according to their observation they found out more chinese are suffering from cancer than the others of course it does not mean that chinese are <laughs> polluted might Uh, this kind of cancer is not due to mental pollution something is wrong somewhere no one can understand in chinese way of life in this country but not in china either in their food or the things that they eat as food or the way how they prepare their food something is wrong sir singapore and malaysia leukemia small children also it's a blood cancer but they are not new sicknesses we should not regard them as new sicknesses sicknesses existed few thousands years ago when you refer to the buddha teaching not very old but 2500 years uh, there you can see the names of certain sicknesses mentioned there in the buddha teaching diabetes is there so diabetes is not a new sickness even at that time also it was a common sickness so but these sicknesses that medical science could manage to discover were unknown at that time people never learned how to diagnose these sicknesses therefore today we think these are new sicknesses. but our way of life aggravated the situation and more and more cases are there but those days very rare and this is the only difference our artificial life so then the life of span maximum goes down to 10 years Of course there are some religionists who try to mislead others frighten others to convert people into their religion the main purpose is just to convert them that's all that 1997 no 99 no god is going to destroy this world and when god appear he will come and judge you at that time when you uh, stand in front of him you should not stand as a sinner otherwise you have no chance to go to heaven you must be prepared 
we want to go to heaven at that time, you must accept this religion, you must be converted, then the God will straight away send you to heaven. Now they are preaching everywhere, many people believe, now they are ready, getting ready, packing all their things, suitcase, everything, to go to heaven in 1997. This hock and bull story, they started long ago, nearly twenty to thirty years ago also they made the same story. The God is going to destroy this world very soon, you must be get ready, but he did not destroy. Now they fix the date, 1997. According to the prediction made by Amsterdam, you might have seen that uh, video tape, what he has predicted regarding the major incidents which have taken place all over the world. Uh, he says, I, I saw this film, in 1999, but he does not refer to God. He said, 1999, definitely there will be a world war. And that one is not a joke. Not like First World War or the Second World War. They were in infancy stage at that time, just like small children play at that time. At this time when they used all their modern discoveries, weapons, nuclear weapons, uh, they completely massacre, completely uh, destroy, wipe out all the living things that which exist on this earth. It's quite possible. Then who create this? It is impossible for us to believe that God created this, our devil created There is no reason for them to create Now the Buddha has said here, he is explaining gradually how we reach up to that dangerous point and who created this. And there is no interference of God or devil here. All these things, changes, done by human mind. The human mind is responsible for the destruction as well as the development for the both. Don't blame anybody else. Mr. Nehru, the Prime Minister of India, he has said, when he was giving a talk at the United Nations, he said, Today in this world we have only two choices. If we really want to survive on this earth, there is only one choice. What is that? The advice given by the Buddha, what is that? Nahi verena verani sammanti ta kudajana, averena ca sammanti esa dhammo sanantano, dhamma padma. What the Buddha says? Every intellectual, even non-Buddhist also caught, this sayings of the Buddha. What does it mean? Hated never ends by hatred, but by loving kindness. Uh, this is the sayings of the Buddha. So Nehru says, so if we want to survive in this world, we have to follow this advice given by the Buddha, because today we can see a lot of hatred all over the world. So if we continue this, then nuclear weapons and so many other things 
Human hatred is there. They use and destroy. So if we can, if we want to give up hope for our existence or our survival, uh, then we have to choose the nuclear weapon. Very easily we can wipe out the whole mankind from this world. Uh, this is the situation of the world today. All these are the discoveries of human mind. Nuclear weapons that which destroy the whole world also discovered by the human mind, not given by God or devil. See how wonderful, how powerful this human mind is, can discover certain things to destroy the whole world, not only this world. They say, when once it is blasted, the vibration reach up to the sun and the moons and the galaxies, and they are also affected. Human mind. Now, on the other hand, when we cultivate this mental energy, when you purify this mental energy and the radiation that transmits from that mind also reach the other world system, more powerful more energetic than the nuclear enemies. But we have neglected them. Now that is why we started digging our own grave according to our way of life. Our craving, our selfishness, our ignorance especially these things, completely eclipsed, covered our understanding, our reasoning. When our minds are tempted or intoxicated with selfishness or craving, at that time we have no reasoning, no sense of reason. Then the attitude, the method or the action that we manipulate at that time can become very nasty, destructive, very unfortunate. So the duty of a religion to tell us, to point out these weaknesses of the human mind, and teach them how to get rid of these things and how to cultivate the mind, but not just to come and pray and worship. We have limited religion or religious activities just to pray and worship, that's all. They think they are practicing their religion. But all those evil forces are boiling in their mind. Then where is religion? What is the purpose of religion? What is the purpose of worship and praying? If religion cannot cultivate man's mind, 
whatever method, whatever technique, whatever science or education that we use. become more dangerous because today people are using scientific knowledge to destroy others. But primitive people never learned all this. So what will happen when our age <coughs> maximum age, gone down to ten years. Even certain cats and dogs also can live more than ten years today. The main reason is they are leading more natural life. All the other animals who do not associate with human beings lead natural life. They will be free from many of those problems that we are facing and the animals who associate with us also face such problems. Because our food, our way of life, association with us, influence them, then they lose their animal nature. Later they do not know how to follow the nature, natural way of life. That is why these animals who are associated with humans, monkeys or birds, after some time when you release them in the jungle, you know what, what would be the fate of them. They cannot survive. All the others in the jungle immediately come and attack and kill and destroy them, because they have lost their original animal nature. animal instincts also, lost a lot. And we were in the jungle, do you know how many thousands or how many millions of years ago? Now we went on developing, developing, cultivating our way of life and the mind, both. So we have completely lost that way of life. Now if somebody release us in the jungle today, what will happen to us? Can we survive? Can we find out our food? Impossible. Because we have changed our way of life. But at the beginning we were in the jungle, we were used to that way of life. But still there are some hill tribes in Mongolia, Tibet, Siberia and certain countries who are used to that primitive man's way of life. They are quite healthy, take natural food. We can say they are not cultured, but nothing wrong with them. So the problem with us, not only our morals and ethics and lack of a spiritual development, but our physical condition completely change according to our way of life, we have become crazy for indulgence, pleasure, unlimited pleasure. 
all the others have limited time. Occasionally they experience pleasure. To us all these five senses are not enough to enjoy our pleasure. If we have four eyes, two mouths, so much the better. One mouth is not enough for us to eat. Two eyes also not enough. There are so many beautiful things for us to see. Two ears also not enough. Now this is the way how we use our life today. So what are we doing? <coughs> In spite of enjoying, relaxing and experiencing pleasure, what do we gain? We invite more excitement. If there is no excitement, uh, there is no kick. Uh, there must be kick, otherwise no, no pleasure. See how far we have developed our enjoyment. Let us take one example. Music. Those days they have composed nice music by following certain rhythm, tune, So when you listen to this music, we feel that we are entertaining our human emotion. It is very important for us that rhythm entertain us. Then we get some sort of soothing feeling. Then calm the mind, relax the body. Chanting also provides the same thing, but there is an extraordinary thing there in chanting, devotion and respect. Not for enjoyment's sake. When you listen to chanting, you develop devotion and respect. But today, when you watch and listen, the way how people sing, where is the rhythm? And what do, what do they see? It is just like a battlefield. And this is called singing. Can you imagine how far we have corrupted our human mind to appreciate this kind of music? Disgraceful. You see, wonderful. <laughs> this is music. I really cannot understand what is wrong with the human mind today. dance. Those days they had very nice, meaningful, cultural, traditional dance to entertain, cultured way, not to arouse the animal nature of young boys and girls. But today, when you go and see, they are dressed, the way how they dance, arouse, boiling. You regard this as entertainment. The whole body is melted. No soothing feeling. These few examples are more than enough for you to understand 
how we are deteriorating, declining, going down and down and down. Our culture, our arts, our dance, our music, our way of life, our food, our dress, everything. We regard this as a development. In certain countries many people have realized and they want to keep away from the so-called modern society and modern entertainment and try to lead a natural life, take natural food, relax more. They are not crazy for many of these things now. There will be a day for you also to understand. Ah, here, when that maximum life goes down to ten, people start to think. Here the Buddha says in Chakravarti Sihanada Sutra, very few human beings remain at that time. Earlier they have attacked each other, killed each other, and they have played havoc to destroy everything. It's happening. It started already. Now then they started to think, what happened? What is happening? We are the mistake. Some of them get back, come back to their normal way of thinking, realize. All those people who were with us are no more. What happened to them? Why did they die earlier? Why did they kill each other? For what purpose? Oh, because of their craving, hatred, anger, or they are ignorant. They have done all these things. These are good lessons for all of us. Reverse their thoughts. Then start a new campaign, new movement to tell others, all those who are remained, try to enlighten them also. But not so easy. Take time. Having gone through their trials and errors and mistakes and sufferings, some of them could manage to realize, or oh, it is due to their mistake. Destructions has not taken place due to the influence of certain other planets or gods or devil, but their own poisonous human mind. So our duty is to change this mental attitude, to come back to a normal way of life. Now then this has, this will become a turning point. They have gone up to that and again become a turning point. Up to this period, not only human beings or other living beings, the nature, plant life, fruits, flowers, vegetables, climate, All these existing phenomena 
uh, also completely change. Polluted human mind changed the whole world. You cannot understand how it takes place. Chittena niyati loko. Here, another saying of the Buddha. The whole world is led by the chitta, human mind. Again, khammana vartate loko. The world exists either in our favor or it goes against us. There is some sort of energy. Uh, many people interpret this energy as God. The Buddha says, Kamana vartate loko. Karmic energy is responsible for this. And where does this karmic energy exist? That karmic energy exists in our human mind, not in the air. So the pure human and mental energy and the karmic energy, both, two energies are there now. are responsible for all these changes. Volcanic eruption, flood, drought, and so many other kinds of disasters take place from time to time. We do not know the reason. We never think that human mind also contributes for this disaster. Because when the mind is polluted, that mental vibration that we radiate, hatred, anger, jealousy, grudge, enmity, all the evil forces, this mental vibration, that we radiate from here. These are very powerful energies. When this mental vibration absorb, mix up with the existing basic elements, basic elements, also energies. When we say elements, we take these things as animal. Elements, we take only energies. The origin of element is energy. Elements of the matter come into existence because of that energy. So our mental vibration mix up with that basic energy, elemental energy. So when these mental forces are evil, imbalance, clashes amongst the elements and energies, take place. Now then the earthquake, volcanic eruption, flood, drought, so many other problems take place. This is a very minor example for you to understand how human mind can change the world.
then then what would be the situation of this mind if we cultivate this develop nurture all the good qualities then radiate kindness compassion patience tolerance honesty all the good qualities from our mind going on radiating radiating is called metta and various other good qualities then all the elements and existing cosmic energies <coughs> harmonize cooperate then balance properly and uh, then the prosperity the development weather or the climate plants vegetables flowers fruits all the existing external cosmic energies become favorable for our existence for our living and now you can understand who destroy this world and who develop this world our minds so when they started to think then slowly they determine to change their way of life after that again turn towards the development turning point started all it <coughs> then slowly going up and up and up and up and you call the development <coughs> it goes up to the maximum level and this situation remain forever in this universe that mean for certain period our life our way of life world worldly condition everything goes down and down and down and down again during certain period goes up and up and up and up and up uh, always like this this is the nature when you study the <coughs> vicissitudes eight worldly conditions the buddha explained this there are eight thing negative positive negative positive uh, exactly say <laughs> so the development deterioration nature if anything goes up that one must drop cannot remain forever worshiping to anybody doesn't solve the problem we have to adjust our mind then the changes take place then i give very practical advice for you to understand at home you have no peace husbands and wife parents and children brothers and brothers and sisters and sisters there's no peace no happiness no cheerfulness no harmony no cooperation all are very unhappy their life is very miserable 
stare at each other. Then hatred and jealousy also. Then all of you assume five in that family, thinking something is wrong somewhere. Naturally you think a charm or someone might have done a charm. This is a way of thinking. So what you do? All right. All of you go, I don't think jointly you can do that because you have no cooperation. Individually, you go out and pray. There is no peace at home, so I came to pray, to have peace. Another person goes to another temple, I came to pray. There was no peace, no harmony in our family, amongst our family members. Goes and pray. So all these family members goes out and pray asking God to create very pleasant atmosphere at home for all of them to live peacefully. Yes, after praying they come home, but the same attitude, no changes. One day, by realizing this situation, they get together. All right, come, let us have a round table conference. Discuss. Find out our mistake. Find out the misunderstanding. Why not we talk to each other? Why not we admit if we are wrong? Uh, then express that Satyam Satya, you said like this, another one said you did like that, another one say no, I did not do like that, but you thought. You said like this, uh, then after that clear there. Uh, from next, that day on, I again very cheerful, very happy, very cooperative, very understanding. And then who created this pleasant atmosphere? Your mind created. There is no God there. You can go and pray, no harm at all. And this is the method introduced by the Buddha. But we don't want to do that. That is called understanding. Because of our pride, our egoism, we don't want to talk to each other. We don't want to surrender. We don't want to admit that we are wrong. It is egoism. If I am wrong, what harm is there, if I can say, I'm very sorry if I have done any mistake. You don't lose anything. I apologize if I have done anything wrong. Uh, then the other man says, ah, forget about that. Finish. That is the end of it. But you don't want to do this. You go and pray outside. Now, situation is changing. Life, life means average, maximum lifespan, health, and way of life, slowly going on, developing and developing and developing. The mind changes all this. Then they started to think. Now we are concentrating only on worldly things, worldly life, family life, our health. But there are many more things for us to consider, to understand that we have neglected completely. What is that? We have forgotten the dharma. We have forgotten the religious way of life. You have forgotten all the good qualities and the virtues and the humane qualities. Therefore, why not we cultivate these good qualities? Now, then they started to think deeply about the religious way of life. 
Because without this, our human mind cannot satisfy with our life. We are not like animals. No one can satisfy us simply by providing only food and clothing and shelter and medicine. Cannot. We need something else. Pleasure, yes, but cannot satisfy. That is called dharma. That is called religion. Any rubbish in the name of religion. Now when you study what people are doing, practicing, and what they believe as religion or in the name of religion, understanding or educated people, and see they are actually very childish, ridiculous, meaningless, at a wastage, even then, to them, that is very important. They can satisfy with that. Now let us take an example. An old lady, take a few joysticks, go out and take this way and 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 and offer. And he feels very happy, satisfaction. He, he feels that she has done her religious duty. But in the eyes of well-educated men, this old lady is a real stupid lady. No real religious value at all. So that is why I told you. Whatever ridiculous method, childish method, we practice in the name of religion, that gives some sort of consolation, console our heart. So the money or property or many other things that which entertain us cannot give that consolation. Now they are concentrating on religious way of life, which were completely neglected. You know, in China and Russia and some other countries, for more than 40 to 50 years, completely neglected and ridiculed and stuck practicing any kind of religion. Because they knew at that time religion is a nuisance, at a wastage. The way how they practice religion at that time. Even then, many people have done this secretly. When I went to Mongolia in 1979, I think, it's a communist country. We were given some interpreters, university graduates, and they told us that they have no religion. They are proud of it. Very proud. We have no religion. You know, our old grandmother, our old grandfather, are still they are praying. You know how they pray? Because it is prohibited to do this publicly. They close the doors and windows and everything and take some joysticks and pray secretly. That feeling is still there. They could not stop this. So it has taken for more than 40 years for those Russians and Chinese to understand that religion is essential. Religion is needed 
pro-human minds. Whatever religious brands, whether true or not, These few days you might have read in Russia, uh, everywhere they talk about Christianity, because at that time, in that country, they never had Buddhism. Orthodox Christianity and those communists have proclaimed to the whole world how those Christians have tortured innocent people for not paying their monthly donation toward the church. That is why they say they want to wipe out Christianity from that country. But still they are keeping many things in the museum to show others how they torture innocent people. It is true. In China, in the name of Buddhism, at that time they have introduced so many practices which has become real nuisance to the country. In Vietnam and Mong Cambodia, how they practice this so-called Buddhism become nuisance to the public. Otherwise there is no reason for them to stop all these things. That is why we have to consider very carefully there will be a day that we had to get rid of many of those things that still we are practicing. There will be no future for many of those practices. But dharma, there is nobody in this world who can say dharma is useless, dharma is out of date, dharma is nuisance. There is nobody. Uh, this is the Buddha said, right? You have to concentrate on dharma. What is dharma? Your respectable way of life, your noble way of life, your harmless, honest life. This is called dharma. Is there anybody who can say that you are wrong? Now, if you are honest man, by following this dharma, is there any human beings in this world who can say that you are wrong, you are useless, you are nuisance? Everybody respect. Oh, he is an honest man. If you are a kind-hearted person, if you don't like to hurt or disturb others, everybody says, oh, he is an innocent man who never harm others, never disturb others. But they have no religion but appreciate your attitude. And this is called dharma. Esa dhammo sanantano, here the Buddha. Dhamma Pada. Esa dhammo, this dharma. Sanantano, eternal. Never become old. Never die, never decay, never disappear. Dhamma is like that. What is this? Ah, this. Again, when you take one Christian, one Hindu, one Muslim, one Buddhist, and one communist, or some others, all these are labels. And you are very kind but you are a Christian. And he is very honest, he is a Muslim. When you analyze, can you see any difference between the kindness that Buddhists develop and honesty that Buddhists develop compared with Muslims and Christians and Hindus? Is it not the same kindness, same honesty, or same sincerity? Is there any difference? And this is called dharma. Dharma has no discrimination, no same thing. Our religious labels create discrimination. You 
very few people can understand it. So then they started to think about dharma. They knew something is missing, something wrong with their way of life. Then try to uphold, maintain some humane qualities, good virtues, then develop religion. First, they developed only humanism, but no religion. What is humanism here? Humanism means we cultivate our way of life to live together with others without disturbing, bluffing each other, without hurting others, by maintaining some sort of dignity and understanding, supporting each other. All these good qualities are under humanism. Because many of these qualities you can find in some other living beings also. But religion is not there. So religion we can find only among the human beings. Only human beings can discover religion. Of course we say given by God, this is only a belief. Human mind discover. Now they are the only one who practice religion. So we have gone up to the maximum level by practicing and experiencing our religious way of life. That is why sometimes when people mention the name of such holy, sacred, pure religious teachers, we kneel down and pay respect. Why? They have reached up to that maximum level. Why all over the world, millions and millions of human beings kneel down and worship the Buddha. He is a human being by considering his religious way of life, his sacredness, his wisdom, his enlightenment, his services, his virtues. For the last 2500 years many changes have taken place in the name of this religion. But these changes are not in favor of the Buddha's teaching. Please remember this. Not in favor. Divided into so many schools and sects, introduce different philosophy, doctrine, teaching, sutras, introduce various methods of practices and worshipping and offerings and chanting, introduce so many things that the Buddha has never taught us. But we regard this as development. Then from another countries come different religious label as Buddhist label. This is not development, my dear friends. Distorted, misinterpreted religious cult 
just to disgrace the dignity and wisdom and enlightenment of the Buddha, lower the status of the Buddha because of our poor mentality, very, very poor, our way of thinking. That is why they introduce all this. But we think this development In time to come you can see more and more new cult, new creeds, new method, new system. But the Buddha is not there. The Hamma is not there. There are so many other beliefs, worldly material things introduced as Buddhism. Because this is the declining period. Still we are going down. When we started to develop, then we throw away all these rubbish that we have adapted from time to time as religion. That is why the Buddhas appear on this earth from time to time. Very, very rare. All the others believe that God is watching. And see what is happening here. So he sent his message to correct, to teach. All these people who were corrupted, misled. Now this is the common belief amongst all the other religions. But Buddhism never believed this. There is nobody to send the Buddha to this world. Is our own development, life after life. There may be so many future Buddhas here who uphold certain good principles. You continue this life after life, going on molding, 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 until one day you attain that higher space. There is nobody to send us to this world as Buddha. So they appear. When the Sakya Muni or Gautama, the Buddha, 2500 years ago, when he gained his enlightenment, he observed, surveyed the mentality of human being. At once the idea appeared in his mind. He says, utter wastage. What a pity. All their minds were clouded, deluded, misled. Holding wrong belief, wrong views, wrong ideas. It's a very, very difficult thing for me to wipe out all this. Earlier, he never had such psychic power to understand their mind. Now, if the Buddha appears now, now, he can survey and he can understand how your minds were deluded, misled, how far. Even then, in your case, uh, still it is not too late. Not, <laughs> not that bad. Is, uh, still there is a vacuum, I believe, in your mind. But in certain cases, chronic cases, can no, no remedy at all. Because those beliefs were crystallized in their mind, cannot change. So he had a very big battle for 45 years, day and night, to wipe out all those things. He was succeeding. But after his death, 
His disciples also, Arahant, could manage to maintain this purity for another five hundred years. After five hundred years, then slowly, slowly started dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and Arahant and Sakudagami and Anagami and Sotapanna and this and going down and down and down. Now still going down and down and down. This is the nature. So we are practicing so many things. We believe so many things because many of us are misled. However, when we realize this situation, we try to reverse it. Then again, we can come up, wipe out evil and wrong concepts and beliefs that we have accommodated in our mind. So you are learning. You are listening, you are thinking. So while listening and thinking what you are doing, you are having a very big battle in your mind. What is this battle? Many things that you have heard earlier, many things you have learned earlier, about religion and Buddhism and the Buddha, cannot agree with this interpretation. Now it is a very big battle in your mind. It will take time. Your mind starts to argue. After arguing and arguing and thinking and thinking and thinking, what will happen? You agree to surrender your old belief, knowing that it is wrong and this is the correct method. Uh, that is called learning. Otherwise you cannot learn anything. If you collect all these things and dump everything into your mind and maintain same age-old belief, and all these teaching together mix up, muddle up, you create more confusion, no understanding. Now this is the way how to learn. Because in my case I can understand this very clearly. What sort of belief, concept, ideas I had many years ago or when I was learning when I was young, and many of those beliefs I had to drop completely. Because I knew those ideas are wrong. That is called learning. So today we stop here, number 18. So we did not go very far. Now this part is very interesting. Now coming up. So next Friday I'll continue from there.